Over the last two years, I have produced almost 300 videos on this channel, most about dogs, but some about cats and other topics. With that number of videos, you would think that I would have discussed every topic available. But I realized recently that there is one aspect of living with dogs and cats that I have largely ignored up to now. The subject that I have overlooked is the actual living space that dog owners share with their animals. Not home sweet home, but home smelly home. There's a sensory adaptation that kicks in when we get used to a smell. Because we are used to it, we no longer smell it. This is called olfactory fatigue, also known as odor fatigue, olfactory adaptation, and nose blindness. It is the temporary, normal inability to distinguish a particular odor after a prolonged exposure. You will have noticed it if you have been away from home for a while, and your home smells strange when you come back. When you were living there, you got used to the smell. Your absence resets your sense of smell. Dog and cat owners experience nose blindness, while the rest of us suffer the smell that these animals create. Many of you who live in a dog-free environment will be able to smell a dog owner, even if they don't have a dog with them, because the smell of dog permeates their clothing. In short, dogs and cats make your house smell unpleasant. Some people claim to enjoy the smell of dogs and cats. I made a video entitled Frito Feet, Popcorn Paws, and Pseudomonas Bacteria, in which I discussed the enjoyment that some pet owners got from the smell of infection on their animals. I also discussed dog smells in my video, Male Dogs Drip Semen and Smegma Onto Furniture and All Over the House. Even if people enjoy the smells of dogs and cats, it impacts on the social life of their owner and on their ability to sell their house. The presence of dogs and cats makes the home a less comfortable place. Not only will your home be smelly, it will also be dirty. Dogs bring in dirt from the outside. They shed hair and skin, known as dander. As well as making your home dirtier, people are allergic to dander, and it can trigger respiratory problems in others. Dog worshippers deny this by claiming that dogs are cleaner than humans. See my video, Is Dog Fur Really Cleaner Than a Man's Beard, for more information on the subject. If dogs are so clean, we have to ask why all of the vacuum cleaner manufacturers aggressively market cleaners specifically designed to deal with pet hair and dirt. Dogs will also bring unwanted visitors into your home in the form of ticks, fleas, and parasites. There's a possibility that you will become infected by your pet. By making your human home into a pet-friendly home, you have created a human-unfriendly place in which the pet and its needs and wants reign supreme. You have invested time, effort, and money into making your life worse and less comfortable. Logic suggests that such expenditure should be directed to improving your situation, not worsening it. Your time is going to be taken up by all of the chores necessary to maintain the pet. Time that should be enjoyed with your family or simply relaxing on your own is now taken up by replacing flea collars, applying tick medication, bathing the animal, walking it, feeding it, dealing with its biological waste. Your pet's sleep patterns and where it chooses to sleep will impact on the amount and quality of sleep that you will be permitted by that pet. Your home is no longer your castle. You are now living in an animal pen. I have discussed before that dogs and cats do not occupy an ecological niche. 
They do not have a natural habitat because they have to rely on humans for everything. Even when they escape from a human home, they will hang around humans, scavenging and terrorizing. The human environment is designed and built by humans for humans, not for cats and dogs. This fact is so obvious to us, but is just not understood by most cat and dog owners. I discussed this at length in my video, Dog Ownership is Cruel, Love is Hate, Hate is Love. Bringing a cat or a dog into your home is cruel. It is an environment that does not meet the needs of the animal. An example of the inappropriateness of a human home for dogs and cats is that owners claim that the animals need exercise and then take over human leisure spaces to provide the exercise and the freedom that their home denies. The dog is not good for your home, and your home is not good for the dog. The cruel, unsuitable environment that the human home provides causes anxiety in the animals. This is what I said in my earlier video, Dog Ownership is Cruel, Love is Hate, Hate is Love. Quote, stress-related behavior in dogs is often given a psychiatric type designation, such as depression or anxiety, separation and otherwise. Stressed dogs can be given psychotherapy in the form of obedience training to make them conform to the human ideal of what a dog should be, or they can be given medication. Instead of being recognized as responses to the cruelty of a damaging lifestyle imposed on dogs by humans, aberrant dog behavior is given a psychiatric style designation and is medically managed. The human response to this cruelty is then sold off as kindness and good animal management." End quote. The environmentally created anxiety may also be shrugged off as a joke and the dog given a humorous label of a Velcro dog because it refuses to leave the owner's side. The unsuitable environment and treatment causes the anxiety, but features outside of the home, such as fireworks, thunder, and loud noises are blamed rather than the responsibility being placed firmly in the home where it belongs. In my recent video entitled A Very Nasty Hobby, I put forward the idea that the presence of a dog in a human space transforms it into a dog space. It is the same idea in the home. There are varying degrees of this, but some people go to extreme lengths to position their home as dog-friendly rather than human-friendly. You will all be familiar with this kind of statement. There are similar, supposedly funny, lists of dog rules which indicate that the home belongs to the dog, not the owner. These usually have the title Rules of the House, and you can buy them to relate to any breed of dog. This humorous approach indicates an easy familiarity with the nature of how the presence of a dog will change your home. Some dog owners behave very passively and allow their dogs to control the home environment. Furniture designed, built, paid for, and placed in the home by humans is commandeered by the dog for the comfort of the dog and humans are denied the use. I can imagine that dog worshippers will try to contradict this with the old owner, not the dog, mantra. They claim that dogs are only aggressive because the owner fails to train them properly. So it follows that dogs must only be controlling if the owner lets them. If dogs are so difficult to deal with, then they should be campaigning for mandatory training or psychiatric assessment to exclude certain types of owners. 
The owner, not the dog mantra, is at odds with this idea that dogs are gentle, loyal, biddable, loving creatures. Like so much of dog owner explanations, it doesn't make much sense. Another argument is the statistical one, that I am deliberately cherry-picking extreme cases because most dogs don't behave like that. The fact that there are so many memes related to dominant controlling dogs and that such levels of control are presented in a humorous light indicates that it is normal every day and accepted. An article in a publication called The Dodo lists the signs that a dog has taken over the home. The first eight signs are the couch is one of the most coveted places in the house, second only to the human bed, toys are everywhere waiting for you to throw them, see my recent video on the purpose of squeaky toys, the kitchen is no longer a place for preparing food. It is a place you are spied on. Coming home to piles of confetti is a sign of destruction, not celebration. Bathtubs aren't for bathing. They are for hiding from thunderstorms. Windows are excellent places for sunbathing. The washer and dryer have become sources of entertainment. Eating at the table is something you will never have to do alone, even if you wanted to. There are 12 signs in the article, but the last three were undisguised dog idolatry. So I left them out. You are free to read the article. I'll put the link in the description. The statement about coming home to piles of confetti is an attempt to make light of and minimize the destruction that pets cause in the home. Damage to furniture and fittings to varying degrees is to be expected and accepted when you keep a cat or a dog in your home. Some dog owners accept it by falsely believing that the animal feels and shows remorse for its actions. It doesn't. It is afraid of being punished. That is not the same as feeling guilty. I included this article because the lighthearted manner in which it is written demonstrates that most dog-owning readers will identify with the sentiments and have a familiarity with the content. The fact that such intrusion into human living is given a positive and sentimental gloss illustrates that most dog owners are willing to give up their human lifestyle to give to the dog. Pet Health Network addresses pet destructiveness by suggesting that the reason for destructiveness in the home is caused by boredom and stress. The solutions offered are for the humans to adjust their lifestyles to suit the dog. Some humans go to extremes when placing the comfort of the dog above their own comfort. CNBC published an article in 2018 on their real estate section with the headline, Millennials Put Pets First When Buying a Home. A December 2020 article in GenBiz reported a mortgage company survey, which concluded that 42% of millennials who have never purchased a home said that their pet would be a key factor in any future home buying decisions. Not only are people willing to accept the negative impact that a dog has in the home, they will treat such impact lightly as if it's a joke or something to be accepted like the weather. We are all familiar with the hero dog concept. There are countless tales of dogs that rescued their owners in a house fire and supposedly saved their lives. See my videos, Dogs Are Not Heroes and Cats Are Not Heroes. We are given the impression that if you don't have a dog in the home, then you could burn to death. 
On the contrary, pets are more like arsonists than firefighters. They knock things over, bite into electrical cords, turn on gas stoves, and get too close to open flames. Nearly 1,000 fires are started each year in the USA by pets, according to the National Fire Protection Association. The home is dangerous enough without adding dogs and cats to the mix. According to the CDC, thousands of people are injured by their pets every year, mainly by tripping over them or being pushed or pulled by them. These accidents are in addition to the bites and scratches inflicted by pets. Dogs don't belong in houses, but people are not only willing to invite them in, they are then willing to hand their home over to the dog, diminishing the pleasure, comfort, and safety their dog-free home can provide. There is a horror film called Let the Right One In, which is based on the idea that a vampire has to be invited into your home before it can step over the threshold. Once you have invited the vampire in, the resulting horror is your responsibility. Don't let the dog in. You will regret it. The future is dog-free.